Hey, this is New World Tarot, and um, if you're new to the channel, check out some of my content, and if you like it, then go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I would love to have you here. Um, so, um, the reason why I'm here today is because I ran across a very interesting conversation from Jordan Peterson. For those of you who don't know, this is new for me. I've been trying something new on my channel. Um, I am a tarot reader. But I'm also trying to put out some other content to make um, the people in my community become more aware of things that I think they are not paying attention to. So I wanted to bring forward this conversation and give my thoughts and opinions on it. Um, I hope that you guys enjoy the video. Don't forget to thumbs up. And like I said, subscribe if you care to. All right, let's get into it. A really good way of deciding who you should have around you because... Make friends with people who want the best for you. I had friends who wanted the best for me and friends who didn't. And, you know, they were friends who, some of them were aiming up and some of them were aiming down. And if you have a friend that's aiming down and you do something that's aiming up, then they're generally not that happy about it. You know, they try to top your accomplishment with one of their own hypothetical or real or put down what you're doing or offer you a cigarette if you're trying to quit and you've kind of done that successfully or a drink if you've been drinking too much and are... It's trying to stop being an alcoholic, you know, or yeah, they're cynical and bitter and and devoted towards no good and some. Let me just say this first of all. Um, I tell people often on my channel that um, sometimes, even though it is one of the most difficult things to do, a lot of times when you're trying to elevate and you're trying to become the best version of yourself. One of the hardest things I think that people have to do is to walk away from family and friends, especially lifelong friends or people that are very close to you, um, parents, siblings, um, you know, cousins and people that are really, really close to you. But I've had people do the exact thing that he just said, both the statements that he mentioned. I quit smoking for like eight months and I had a cousin that came over to my house to visit and blew smoke all in my face. Um... Another point in time, I had stopped drinking and I had a family member shaking a bottle of liquor in my face like, you know, you want some, you know, you want some. And I guess that they thought it was funny, but of course I didn't. You know, sobriety is a real thing, especially if it's something that um, you realize that you've been using as a coping mechanism or something that could possibly be making you um, uh, engage in very unsafe behavior and at that point that's where I was I think I had like kind of hit rock bottom at the time and it wasn't funny to me it actually hurt my feelings a lot and it made me cry a lot because of who the person was it was just kind of unbelievable I was like really but anyways I just wanted to let you guys know that this is a very true statement for some of course not everyone but I think that um, a lot of times we kind of ignore red flags when it comes to family members because they're family, because in our minds, a family member is always supposed to have your best interest at heart. You know, like who wants to look at their mother or father or cousin or brother or sister as a negative entity in their life. But unfortunately, we have to start becoming more mindful of these type of things because I think a lot of people ignore that because of the labels. I don't do labels. Um, you know, brother, sister, aunt, cousin, I don't do labels. I'm, I'm simply a, a, a person of energy. If your energy is right, I mesh, we mesh, we make sense, then it just is what it is, right? If we don't, then we don't. I don't care who you are. If you need to be removed from my life, I have no problem with walking away from you and pretending like you never existed, Okay, I have no problem with that. And I think that needs to be an energy that needs to become more real when it comes to human relationships and human behavior. I think that a lot of healing would take place planetarily if people were okay with just walking away from things that don't make sense. Okay. Family members too, and sometimes it's even part of you, you know, but... Like you have an ethical responsibility to take care of yourself, you have an ethical responsibility to surround yourself with people who have the courage and faith and wisdom to wish you well when you've done something good and to stop you when you're doing something destructive. And if your friends aren't like that, then they're not your friends. 
and maintaining your friendships with them might not even be in their interest. Be careful about whom you share good news with. And another was be careful about whom you share bad news with. A friend is someone you can share good news with, you know. You go to them and you say, hey, look, this good thing happened to me. And, and they say, look, I'm so happy that that happened to you. Like, way to be. And they don't think, God damn it, why didn't that happen to me? And like, you know, you didn't deserve it. Here's a bunch of reasons you're stupid and why it won't work. It's like, that's not helpful. I want to know something. You guys um, leave leave the answer in the comment section. How many of you have had friends, family members, people that you consider close in um, relationships with you that you've told good news to and they will pretend to be happy for you and you know it because you feel it? They don't necessarily say it, but you feel it. Like you know that they are against whatever it is that you're happy about. For instance, I'll give you guys a story. Um, when I first got my CDL license uh, and was getting ready to drive trucks, um, I had almost no real stable work history because I was a stay-at-home mom for so many years. Um, and a lot of the jobs that I did have were like restaurants and, you know, customer service and things like that. Not really driving jobs, you know. Um, so when I got ready to get into the trucking industry, it was really, really difficult. Once I graduated from a school, it was really difficult for me to find a job because everybody wanted a 10 year work history. And I'm like, well, I don't have that, you know, um, at least not stable, you know, because for the most part, I was at home with my children. Um, so, um, I ended up looking up, you know, and getting a company that did take me, but, um, the moral of my story is, um, I had a family member that, um, when I came home from trucking school and, you know, I was sitting and I was talking to her and there's somebody that was really, really close to me, somebody I considered like almost like a mother. And I was like, you know, I was like, I, I don't know what's happening, but I'm not seeming to be able to get, you know, into the trucking industry and I'm not sure why this is happening, but you know, I'm going to keep pushing forward. And do you know, when I said that to her and told her that all the doors were closing in my face, she said, yes, I knew it. I knew you were meant to be here with me. I knew God put you in my life to stay with me. You ain't meant to leave me. And I'm on the phone. Like, is this lady freaking serious? She was serious. She was serious. She offered me a job as her maid. Yeah. <laughs> Pay attention. Carl Rogers, who's a psychotherapist, he had this idea that what he would manifest towards his clients in therapy was unconditional positive regard. And I've always had trouble with that because, well, because you don't, Treat your children, for example, with unconditional positive regard. Mean, so no matter what someone yeah. says, you're saying, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's well, well that's, that's why it's tricky. Well, what, he, what he, he didn't articulate it, I think, as well as he might have. What you want to do is, for your child, is that you want the best for the best in them. That's what you want. And that's what you want from people that you surround yourself with. Now, they'll hold you to a high standard if that's the case, right? Because whenever you degenerate in any of the multiple ways that you're likely to degenerate they're gonna like whack you on the back of the head and say you know clue the hell in you know you're you're demeaning yourself you're less than you could be and there, there's real judgment in that and it's harsh you know but with friends it's the same thing you want friends they're not friends if they're not these people you want friends who when something good happens to you they're that's good for you right they're happy about that. They're not like all bitter and resentful underground and like saying horrible things behind your back and telling you how they did something that was better and trying to drag you down. It's like, that's not helpful. And then when something bad happens to you and you go to them and you say, look, this terrible thing happened to me. First of all, they don't try to top it with some like horrible thing that happened to them because they don't have the patience to listen. And second, they're not secretly gloating about the fact that catastrophe finally befell you. It's like they're actually hurt by it. And that, that chapter is an injunction. It's like, take a look at the people that are around you. And if they're not on the side of what's good for you, then walk away. Because, well, first of all, that's best for them too. If you put up with that, all you're doing is enabling it. It's like, well, it's okay that you mistreat me in a way that's harmful to me and everyone else. It's like, actually, no, that is not okay. It's not, in, it's not the least bit okay. That doesn't mean you shouldn't try to help someone when they're down. 
that's a whole different issue. What if it's your family? So you know how you say like walk away, right? Do you still walk away from your family? Kind you of? do if it's necessary. Yeah. There's lots of different ways of walking away. Sometimes someone's on an incorrigible path. Yeah. Like there's just nothing you can do. You know, maybe they're aiming down and they're bitter and everything they do is to produce misery, virtually everything. And you have to detach yourself from that. It's like I always think about it from the perspective of a lifeguard. So if you're training to be a lifeguard, one of the things that you're trained to do is to approach someone who's drowning and panicking. And the way you approach them is you put your foot out between you and them and you push forward with your hands with your foot out. And you basically tell them if they're flailing about, say, look, I'm here to help, but you have to calm down. And then if they cling to you, like in panic, you push them away. You think, well, that's pretty damn cruel because what if they drown? It's like, yeah, what if you both drown? That's like not helpful. You're, you're there to rescue them. They take you down. You're both dead. It's like. So basically what he's saying is one of the red flags that a lot of people love to ignore for some odd reason is when they see a person in distress. Okay. He used the, the scenario of a drowning, someone drowning. Okay. This part of the message is going to be for black women. I want to know this. If you see black men drowning. You see them flailing, flailing about, they're panicking. You see them drowning. You see them in need of your help. Why would you run in and go and allow them to grab onto you and bring you down as well? And you both end up dying. This is what I see happening in the black community every single day. I see black women being tortured because they're educated, being told that they're wrong for owning homes, being told that they're wrong for having money, being told that they're wrong for having standards. Everything that you do, black men are sitting around complaining about it. It doesn't matter what it is. If you say, oh, I'm going to save myself. Oh, you aren't freaky enough. Oh, that's why I'm going to go get with Becky. If you make too much money, oh, you make too much money. Oh, nope, I'm going to go get Becky. Oh, you own a home? No, nope, I don't even want you owning a home. No, I'm going to go get Becky. That is a sign of somebody who's insecure. Someone who is on a downward spiral, straight to the bottom, with no wings, no parachute, no nothing. They're, they're going to hit rock bottom. But black women, for some reason, keep running in to rescue them. And these men keep taking them down with them. My question to black women, I do want you to leave comments in the comment section. I want to know, why are you allowing this behavior? Why do you not see this behavior as dangerous? Why do you not see your life in danger? Why? I don't understand why you don't get it. I don't understand why you don't see what everyone else can see. Pay attention right it's like well it's the same with someone in your family it's like if they're on a downward path and you've done your best you know you've you've made your efforts you've and they're not paying attention they're not changing they say yeah well i'll quit doing this yeah i'll quit doing this they tell you the same story over and over and over it's a downhill path mm -hmm. you don't trust it at some point first of all you stop offering your words if you're offering words of wisdom to someone in the genuine attempt to help and they treat that with contempt, then shut up. Why, why? Why do we keep trying to have conversations with them? Why do we keep trying to reason with people that we see are gonna, they're going to pick apart everything that you say, find something wrong with it, and then they're going to blame you for everything. You can't even be the responsible parent and be there for your child without that even being a problem. Being being normal, being human, a, a, the natural instinct of a mother, I don't care if you're a human, I don't care if you're a monkey, I don't care if you're an elephant, a, a lion, any a, a ant, every single thing that exists on the planet, the mother's natural instinct is to care for her offspring. They're blaming you for that. They're telling you that the black community is in the condition that it's in because you are being the responsible party. Pay attention, ladies. You're demeaning your words by throwing them away. 
you think, well, how do you help someone who's aiming down? Well, sometimes you help them by walking away and saying, look, you're aiming down so hard, despite the fact you're my brother, man. It's like, you know, this is killing me. You're aiming down so hard. I'm not coming along with you. And the reason I'm not is to tell you in no uncertain terms that what you're doing is so terrible that I will even violate our kinship to oppose it. And maybe it'll take them 10 years to wake up to that, you know, and so that can be the case because, you know, people often have to be hit so many times before they'll learn. Black women, how many times do you have to be hit before you learn? How much history do you need? How many books do they need to write? How many times do you have to see these men toe-tagging women every single day, several times a day, before you finally say, okay, wait a minute, maybe there's something wrong with my behavior. Maybe I'm not really helping. Maybe what I'm doing is enabling. Maybe me not holding these men responsible for their action and 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 standing up for them and fighting for them and 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 making excuses for them is not really helping them. When are you going to sit down with yourself, whoever you are, wherever you are, when are you going to sit down with yourself and say, okay, wait a minute, let me look at this thing from a different lens. Let me pay attention to what's happening in my community. What is actually going on? Or are you going to be sensitive to, oh, he didn't do anything. Oh, Brian put his knee on his neck. Oh, you shouldn't treat him like that. Or are you paying attention to what's actually happening and going on around you? Are you really paying attention? That would be my question to you. Are you really paying attention? Especially if someone's addicted or otherwise pursuing a pathway that's like seriously downhill. Mm -hmm. So... Why should I think that you're actually trying to change? You're, you tell me the story that you use to justify your own idiocy to yourself. And then you tell it to me and you demand that because I'm compassionate, I accept it and therefore validate your excuse. It's really hard not to get tangled up in that, right? Because Is this not what we see black men doing on all of these platforms? Telling us the delusional story of them being victims, of them not having any power, how the, the, the system is stopping them from building, the system is stopping them from being in the home, the system is stopping them from caring for their children, the system is stopping them from being able to find good jobs. It's always something. It's never them. It's never, it's never their lack of, 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 of enthusiasm. It's never their, 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 um, their lack of, of, of holding it down with one another. It's never their lack of being in actual unity with one another, one another. It's never that. It's never their lack of keeping their, their penis in their pants and only sleeping with one person. It's never that. It's never that. It's always something. It's always somebody. It's always Brian. It's always you black women. It's always your skin tone. It's your makeup. It's your weave. It's your BBL. It's your money. It's your job. It's your home. It's your education. It's everything but them. It's everything but them. Pay attention who's really in rough shape is telling you about why they're suffering. First of all, they're probably about half right in their story, but some of it's justification and excuse and blaming and all of that, failure to take responsibility. It's really hard to stand up and say, no, I don't buy that. No, you're wrong about that. You have to be a brutal bastard in order to do that. But hey, sometimes like surgery is brutal, yeah. right? It's brutal. And so, so this. Listen, I'm a brutal bastard. I don't have no problem with telling somebody how I feel and dropping a motherfucking mic. I don't have a problem with that. I will tell you exactly how I feel. I will tell you exactly what it is. I will tell you exactly how you're being irresponsible. I will tell you. And then it's going to be a mic drop. Because after I'm done reading you, like a book, she out. This is the one thing that, that a lot of people, this type of power is the type of energy that needs to needs to happen. This is what the universe is trying to bring forward to each and every one of us. When I keep telling y'all that the universe energy is shifting, 
There is a separation that's happening, the wheat from the tares, the good from the bad, the saved from the unsaved, the logical from the unlogical. This is what I'm talking about. It comes a time when the universe is going to get tired. She's already tired. She's tired of the irresponsibility. She's tired of us not being responsible with our wounds. We're just running around here birthing black babies like this is cute. We run around here birthing these children like we got daddies for them. We run around here birthing these children like we got money. We run around here birthing these children like we done built some hospitals to take care of them. Like we have our own pharmacists to create our own medicines. Like we have our own doctors. Like we have our own nurses. Like we have our own stores. Like we have our own car manufacturing companies. We don't, we, we should be the last people on earth running around here birthing babies irresponsibly. We should be the last ones. We have absolutely nothing, no legacy to leave our children. None. None. It's no different than what happened on the plantation. You, you're birthing your children into slavery. The only difference is the shackles aren't on their hands and their feet anymore. Now it's on their minds. You're birthing these children into nothing. The same system you complain about the same system that black men are complaining about, this is what you're birthing your children into. It's a problem. Pay attention. Chapter about, you know, only making friends with people who want the best for you. That's a brutal chapter. You know, but it's right, unfortunately. Here's how you know if someone's your friend. You can tell them bad news. And they'll listen. They won't tell you why, you know, you're stupid and why that bad thing happened to you and how something worse happened to them once and, you know, derail the whole conversation. You can actually tell them bad news and they'll listen. So that's a good thing. And then this is a weirder thing. You can tell them good news and they'll help you celebrate. And that's a really good way of deciding who you should have around you because if you have someone around you, you know, something good happens to you and you're kind of afraid to even admit it because, you know, God, something good happened to you. You let that be known and it'll certainly be taken away. So, you know, you, you come out and you sort of tell someone half-heartedly that something good happened to you and they, they give you a whack and then talk about, you know, some, the great thing that happened to them three years ago or worse, the great thing that happened to someone that they knew three years ago. You know, it's like, go away from that person. They're not helpful to you. You are obligated not to associate with people who are trying to damage the structure of being. Your being, the family being, social being, all of that. It's like, no, wrong, move away. And you think, well, you know, that's cruel. It's like, it's not cruel. You're sending a message. This sort of behavior is not to be tolerated. Plus, if you make a success out of yourself, let's say that you develop your character, well, then you're, in, you're a, uh, example and at some point maybe that's what that person is going to need is an example you know maybe they'll hit bottom and think oh my god I'm not on the right path it's like there's an example I could follow so and you can't justify it by compassion and the other thing you know people don't exactly understand that they it's okay morally to choose people that are trying to help you be better and to shy away from people who are going to drag you down. So you're not morally obliged to go down with someone else's ship. You are not morally obliged to go down with someone else's ship. That's what black men want from you. They are getting up on public platforms telling you your education is a problem, you are being a homeowner is a problem, you becoming the fastest entrepreneur is, is a problem. You having money is a problem. You getting surgery is a problem. Everything that you're doing to better yourself is a problem. You sticking around and raising your children without them is a problem. You're raising the boys that are in the neighborhood that are toe-tagging each other and getting in gangs and you know, confused about their sexuality and robbing everybody and graping women and doing, it's you. It's you. But the way the rest of the world sees this, you, you are enabling this problem 
because you refuse to walk away out of some sort of moral uh, compass that you have created for yourself that makes you believe that it is your job to sit around and allow somebody to pound on you. And in your mind, this is your job, and it's not. It is not your job to allow someone to drown you because they are being irresponsible or afraid. It is not your job to pick up the pieces for someone in life when they don't know how to handle life. It is not your job to allow someone to bring your self-esteem down so low that when they sink, you sink with them. That's not your responsibility. Why are you taking responsibility for this? I don't know. But it's a problem. It is. And what needs to be happening is you need to be very carefully paying attention to who it is that you decide to procreate with. Don't get me wrong. Listen, I'm not telling no woman out here on earth that it's not her God-given right to have children if she wants to. Everybody don't want that. But the ones who do want children, that is your right. But it's also your responsibility to make sure that when you do decide to make this decision to give birth to a person, you all got to stop looking at these babies like they babies. You're only a baby for a few minutes. Once you become an adult, you stay an adult. Okay? That's the longest part of your life. Adulthood. If you're going to give birth to a vessel, a person, a human, someone who's going to become old enough, the way they don't have to listen to you anymore. They have to go out in the world. They have to be around other people. They have to socialize. They have to cope. They have to work. They have to be responsible people. If that's what you want, you're going to have to think very carefully about who the person is that you're laying up with. You can't run and go get no abortion no more. You have to be very careful. What are you doing with your womb? It's the most powerful thing on the planet. The ability to give birth, to give life to someone is the most powerful thing. It is, it is equivalent to the creator. And the creator gave you the responsibility. Are you being responsible with your womb? Are you being responsible with your power? Are you paying very close attention to what people are saying to you with their words and their actions? Are you paying attention to the fact that a person is celebrating your downfalls and secretly hoping that you, fa that you fail at everything you do? Are you paying attention to men who's telling you that they don't want to see you successful? They don't want to see you get from on bottom with them. Either take me with you or die with me, bitch, is what they're saying. Are you paying attention? Or are you ignoring all the red flags? Because you feel morally responsible. For an adult. You feel morally responsible. Because you want to be married. You feel morally responsible. Because he walked out. And left his children. You feel morally responsible. Because you don't want to hurt his feelings. If we don't change the way we think now. We are all on a downward spiral. And we will hit. We will. Just as so as the sun shine. This universe ain't never had a problem with getting rid of people. And black people, you are the most in danger than any other species on the planet. You are endangered. You are an endangered species. Irresponsibility breeds irresponsibility.
When are you going to stand up and show these people that this, this behavior is unacceptable? When are you going to stand up and take responsibility for your God-given right to govern who comes through your body? When are you going to do it? Everybody's waiting for you. I'm just saying. 